Hello! And, as I figured I did the original Fright Night, why not the unestimated Master Two Fingers Up second Fright Night? Where can I begin? When I first saw this back in the golden days of video, I was a bit... Eh. But then over the years, it's drawing on me. And to be open, and to be fair, you know what pisses me off? This is not on fucking DVD. The original Fright Night is. I don't want to say it to people what produce Blu-rays and produce DVDs and raise money on the shitty remake and raise money on the shitty remake sequel. Why the fucking hell are you not a fest money? And Bing Fright Night Part 2, the original 1988 sequel, out. Because it's a damn underestimated sequel. You got Wobby McDowell back as Peter Finsund, and you've got Tari Booster. And in this one, it's that like good. I would love to see Amy, his dear friend from the original, come back. But at the time, the actress was doing the smashing comedy Married with Kids. Remember that? Love and Married, Love and Married, Married with Kids. Because she played a role in that, she couldn't do Fright Night Part 2. Instead, you've got a beautiful do, who we might remember, in Tass of 99, being Tiny Booster's Durf End. And it starts where he's now in college. He's now a college student, not an high school student. His mum not being in it, like in the original, wasn't really that much of a loss, because what did his mum do? She worked nights, and you see her here and there. So it's not really that much lost. It focuses more on Tidy Booster, who again witnesses vampires living next door to him. But to take just any vampire, you find out as the film goes on that she's the sister of the one who they killed in the original. But in the opening, they do sell some fastbacks off the original Fright Night. Not a bad film, and I do actually like the fact that every vampire has a different characteristic. You've got one that eats bugs, which kind of reminds me of Fencefield, remember? In Bantokus Dracula, whether it be Bardos, this one from the 1931 Dracula, or should I say Ben Bedolstis Dracula, you know, Fencefield. He, 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 he eats bugs and the 79 comedy version where again he ate bugs it kind of reminded me of a buff Final Thoughts and Niggas version of him which funny enough and he killed him the actor I should say or the character in the original Exterminator you know the one who has his heart ripped out that was him and he also played the psycho in Tobler it's a Fetterson old film but I actually like the sister in it. I thought it was a different no. This piston in it where I assume it would have just been a different vampire. You know. Dips it different vampires, same night. Or different night, different vampires. But I do think it's interesting. You've got the one on the roller stakes. You don't know if it's a man or a woman. But it's that poor girl on the neck. And you've got one which is a mix of a werewolf and a vampire. Well, you might remember being in the comedy film Monster Stog. Another film that's not on DVD in this country. But all in all, I do like it. There's bits of pace in this, something like the original one, what kept you going all the way through. You know, there's bits where Peter Finson thinks he's a vampire and Charlie's being a dick about it, which is funny knowing he cried vampire. But apart from the pacing issues, it just seems to drag little bits here and there. I still don't think it's a bad one. It's a dud one. It's a dud sequel. And it's getting such some pretty dud awesome special effects. I do like the scene when they go in the party. It reminds me a bit of a nightclub. Awesome place to have a nightclub. And let's not forget Charlie Booster's mate. You may remember playing in Star Trek 2. The Wrath of Time, and he also played Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. Sadly to say, he's no longer with us, may he rest in peace. 
But the actor you may wonder I'm on about played Rhiannon Saintness, Captain T. Sturts, son in Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 3. For he's kind of got killed off in Star Trek 3. The search was not. I should say the search for spot. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing for what it is. It does have funny moments and it doesn't take itself too serious. But for anyone who wants to complain, did the original take itself serious? I thought it had comedy moments in it as well. Sadly the film didn't do as well as the original. But I do think it's a fucking dudden. And it's a damn fucking same it's not on DVD in this concert. And you wanna know what else is a fucking same? They didn't make a Fright Night Part 3. And I would have loved, loved to have seen a Fright Night Part 3. Instead, you get a shitty fucking remake with Jeff in fucking Pharaoh. An actor I totally fucking despise. But, Fight Night Part 2, you get the vampire with the roller states, you got the werewolf one, and you get the one what eats bugs. And they all die a fucking awesome death. Let's not forget the scene where the one who eats bugs <coughs> gets his chest ripped open. And he has bugs coming out of him. But he does do some special effect. A fucking awesome scene. You get the one with the roller states. Gets his face lighted. Beautiful effect. Light lights up. Melts. And there's this little bit in it where I fucking saw I am. fucking saw them. Must have copied it from a certain film. Do you ever remember the stars of Dracula? The one with Dennis Waterman. Could be right and wrong on the name there, but I think it's called this, the start of Dracula. And I think, it could be right and wrong, let me just think. The Horrors of Dracula, what about the ones with Christopher Lee? Horrors of Dracula, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, Dracula, Visions from the Day, the fifth one. I had a title more there. The fifth one. Yeah, because I've got all the Christopher Lee Dracula films. Start of Dracula, there's a scene in it where Dennis Waterman, He's about to state Christopher Lee as Dracula and he's fast to feep and his eyes light up in this neon red light. It doesn't do what it does to Charlie Booster but it knocks out a very long Dennis Waterman before a minor and the screen he was ever heard of. Knocks him out, knocks him unconscious. In this there's a similar scene where Charlie Booster is about to state the female vampire fast to feep in a coffin. She opens her eyes, as I said, Tally's about to stake her with a wooden stake. She opens her eyes where she's fast asleep in her coffin and it doesn't knock him out like the long tennis waterman but it puts him in a trance and he walks off. That reminds me of the start of Chakra and how that was done, a little bit different but similarities. But I do love the way the Dirk gets it in this. You think Peter Vincent is going to be a coward like in the original. But he doesn't. What he does is he gets a broken bit of mirror. Blares it at the female's vampire's face. And he turns it into fucking moose. Awesome. Just fucking awesome. Over the years before we had Fright Night Part 2. They did have a few comic books different things, ones where they're fighting ghosts, different vampires. They even had one where they were hunting werewolves. I would have loved to have seen them return into films, but instead Hollywood be no imagination like they are nowadays. They decided to do a shit make, and it's a damn same. They left it long for them to make a third Fight Night film, which is heartbreaking because Robbie Medell wanted to do a third Fight Night film. But as we know, in 1998, Robbie Medell sadly passed away. May he rest in peace. And over the years, we could have had one with Peter Finson. Peter Finson, it's fucking my brain now. <laughs> could have on the brain. I mean, we could have had Tiny Booster as Peter Finson sort of character. How cool would that have been? Tiny Booster becoming a vampire killer. But no. Instead, they raised money. On a fucking shit make. If I ever talk about that, it'd definitely be a fucking rant. But, all in all, I think it was a dud one. It was a worthy sequel, and it's a damn same as I'll put that on DVD. 
I have managed to get it on a shitty video rip. But I've managed to also find it now on a beautiful DVD rip. It's sad the things you've got to do to get a sequel and it'll bring them on DVD in this country. But all in all, Fight Night Part 2 is a fucking dud one. And for that, I had seen no faults in it. When I first saw it, I saw it and figured, eh, because I was more of a lover of the original. But over the years, it's drawing on me. I think it's a worthy sequel. So for that, I'll give it a 8 star rating. Because it's a lot better than some of the shit they spend money on nowadays. And for vampire films, it definitely has a lot of bite. So for that, as I just said, I'll give it an 8 star rating. Other than that, have a good one. And I'll think of other vampire films. Into then, see you later.